let's go down that road with these Kansas City Chiefs, Michael, because they win the Super Bowl two years ago and they come out last season hot and cold. Um, the wide receiver room, again, there were a lot of questions about and then things just slowly the back end of the season after that Christmas Day game seem to work out for Kansas City. Like every time you doubt this team, they find a way to rise above. Mm -hmm. What what made you write this article yesterday? And what made you ask the question about the Chiefs' potential to three-peat? Well, you know, when you listen to Brady talk about it, and then you go through it, when Brady said how hard it is to win two, I said, well, I went through all the Super Bowl teams and figured out who won. Bob Greasy, Bart Starr, John Elway, you know, Troy Aikman, Tom Brady, and then Patrick Mahomes. And you realize how many didn't, how many were one and done. Aaron Rodgers won one. We talk about Aaron Rodgers like he's won eight. Peyton Manning's won two Super Bowls for two different teams. They couldn't put together any streaks. So you realize how hard it is, right? No matter, And everybody thinks it's just about the quarterback. And then what, what I listened to what Brady was saying, I think we missed the most important element was the quarterback played really well. And the one year Brady Luke gets hurt, that was an exception. But – Usually, teams that don't repeat, it isn't because the quarterback had a bad year. They don't have bad years. Peyton Manning doesn't have a bad year. It's some other part of their team isn't as good as it was the year before. And that's the case in point which led me to the Chiefs. Are they going to be, and this is the question we have to answer, are they going to be as good defensively as they were last year? See, everybody focuses on Mahomes and Kelsey, and of course they're great. But the, what made their team so good was their defense. Remember, this is a team that only threw the ball three times for over 300 yards all year. Three times. They only scored over 30 points one time. I mean, this wasn't a team that was explosive offensively dominating the league. It was, however, a defense that gave up the fewest big plays of any team in the league. It was a defense that was in the top five in scoring defense. It was a defense that created pressure and turnover. And so are they going to be as good defensively without Snead, without some other key players on their team that I think is going to be the reason can they win? And, I, and that's what led me down the road. And that ultimately ended up being the story of the Chiefs last year, right? And I think it's a great point because because their quarterback is Patrick Mahomes and the star power that he and Travis Kelsey and Andy Reid have all had together over the course of the last handful of years. The offense gets all the attention, but we talked consistently last year about how they are winning games because of their defense. Their defense has carried the way for them this year. They've had to win in different ways. They do still obviously have Chris Jones. They still have Spags leading the way as their defensive coordinator. And so we'll see what they're able to put together. But it's a very point well, well taken, especially when you look at the schedule. And the Kansas City Chiefs, we talked about it when the schedule was, was released the other day. That this They have to play on every day of the week except for Tuesday. They have tough situations throughout the course of their schedule where they've got four straight games against opponents with win totals of over nine and a half. They have a Christmas Day game on a short week on the road. There are some schedule spots on here that are very tricky as well as all of the other items you've already pointed out. Yeah, and... Look, you know, there's going to be a little bit of a continuity. You have to carry it over. Are they going to be as fortunate as they were last year, right? I think to me, when you look at some of those games, and, and they're tremendous, and Mahomes' ability to extend plays, make a second play off the first play when it doesn't work, but their roster, I don't see their roster as you're like, whoa, they have no holes. Like, you look at Philadelphia's roster, and if you're honest with yourself, as you said, the Phillies roster doesn't have any real holes. Now, they've got to get the, the Mitchell, the corner who they drafted, to play well. DeGene's got to play well, the rookie they drafted. But for the most part, you look at Phillies roster, you say there's no holes. You look at Kansas City's roster, on the other hand, you say, wait a minute, who's the left tackle? Mm -hmm. Who's the starting outside corner? We know that McDuffie's a really good slot corner, but who's the outside corner? Right. And who's going to be able to compliment Chris Jones? Is Chris Jones going to be as good a player as we thought he was last year now that he got paid and rewarded? There's always that question. So I, I just think there's more questions with the team. And then what is their motivate? What is their 
aptitude to want to be great. I think one of the keys to their team is is their kicker, Buckner, because he's missed two kicks all year. They were in a lot of low-scoring games. Nobody wants to see this. I mean, how many times did we come on Monday and talk about the Chiefs and the under, right? Yeah. I mean, how many times did we talk about that? You know, they beat Denver 19-8. to You know, they, they beat Buffalo 20-17. to You know, they, they – they beat the Raiders the first, you know, tw- they lose to the Raiders 20 to 4. They scored 4. I mean, there are a lot of times where they didn't hold people to point. They, they kept people's point total way down. And their kicker made, I think he made 35 kicks, only missed uh, missed two. And both of those were inside of 40 yards. Yeah, that their offense, we'd see like first quarter, first quarter, first half scoring production, but then like shut out in the second half, shut out in the fourth quarter a number of times that kept that scoring down low. Win total for this year set at 11 and a half. They are the favorite to three beat and to win another Super Bowl this year, which because of all the things that you mentioned did surprise me a little bit. Initially, when this market opened for the Super Bowl next year, it was the San Francisco 49ers who are favored. They're the second shortest shot. The prices are close, but it was interesting to me that Kansas City did take money to make history and be in that position again, despite other teams rising up. And the Kansas City Chiefs were not the best team in the regular season last year. That was the Baltimore Ravens, right? So with that in mind, and we put a poll question out on your Twitter or X formerly known as Twitter at M Lombardi NFL. So those of you listening, watching, get in there, make your vote known. But we put out a poll question for who is um, going to be the biggest threat to Kansas City's chance of three-peating. We put the 49ers, Ravens, Bengals, and Bills up there. Jump in the comments if you think it's the Eagles or somebody else or we left out a true contender. But right now, 35% of the vote say it's the San Francisco 49ers and the Cincinnati Bengals behind them. The Ravens actually third of the four in the voting where things sit right now. Yeah, I I mean, look, you have to think the Bengals are going to be there because the Bengals, remember now, the other thing I talked about in my column, too, was the fact that over the last 10 years, from 2014 to 2024, right, it's been the Chiefs and the Patriots. The Chiefs have won three Super Bowls. The Patriots have won three. The Chiefs and the Patriots both have lost conference championship games. The Chiefs and the Patriots both have lost a Super Bowl. Right. So they've been right there on the cusp. They've been right there. And the one team that's also been right there is Cincinnati when Joe Burrow is healthy and Buffalo. You know, this is what makes it so astounding that Buffalo would trade worthy to the Chiefs when that's the team they got to beat. Like, why wouldn't they trade them to the Patriots? They had a chance to and they turned it down. So I just think to me that you're not going to have you're going to have a hard time eliminating the ability of the of the of the Chiefs if they're in this hunt, right? Yeah. They're too they're they're veteran, have great leadership, but injuries play a huge factor also. The Chiefs are plus three hundred to win the AFC and make the Super Bowl, plus five fifty to win it all, followed by the 49ers six to one, Ravens nine to one, Lions and Bills twelve to one. It's funny already going through the comments, and we'll revisit this topic again a little bit later. But going through the topics, uh, going through the comments here, Jeremy Beckham writes, the only team who consistently beats the Chiefs, the Bengals, who you just referenced. One guy's heartbroken that the Bills are an option over the Eagles. And this comment from Jim Shylander, given everything that's happened this off season the the biggest threat to the Chiefs chances at a three-peat is the Chiefs given everything that's happened this offseason which you know not 100% wrong there they've had a lot of off-field issues that have come to the forefront from various players in various areas no question and I think that's also always the case because what is your motivation to be great what is your desire to to do to run the hill to do all the things you need to do after you've been content, contentment is the hardest thing any coach has to overcome. We see it in college. We see it in pro. Once you've climbed the mountain, it's hard to climb it again because you know what it takes to climb it. And one thing with Mahomes, he'll rally the forces around it. But, you know, look, Kelsey's no spring chicken. That offensive line, no left tackle. There's still things you have to worry about. We want to know on the Lombardi line, who's the biggest threat to the Kansas City Chiefs 
to three, Pete, because Michael put an article up at vcin.com this week on whether or not the Kansas City Chiefs can do it. So far, it's the San Francisco 49ers in the lead at 35.9% of the vote, followed by the Baltimore Ravens, the Cincinnati Bengals. Buffalo not getting a whole lot of love here. And this is over 1,500 votes now in pocket. So I feel like this is a pretty good representative sample of what people think might happen this postseason, Michael. The 49ers in the front running spot. Why do you think they're not getting the Bills aren't getting much action? I mean, look, the Bills, they gave two games away to the Chiefs. You know, the 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 thirteen second game was just so bad, right? And then last year they had every opportunity to win the game. They missed a forty four yard kick into the windy part of the field. If you go back and watch that game, Bass almost missed the opening the opening field goal, which was at that end of the uh, of the stadium. It was uh, it was a chip shot and he, you know, kind of wobbled and just got in there. But, you know, they had a chance to win that game. They just stopped. They stalled off in the in the red zone a couple times and then they couldn't get moved the ball once they got into Kansas City territory and had to settle for a 44 yarder. I just think people must think Buffalo is going through some changes defensively, which they are without Hyde, without Poyer, where's Milano? Can he stay healthy for an entire year? Who's going to be, you know, we know Von Miller hasn't played well in two years, so maybe that's the case. But when you have Josh Allen, I don't want to bet against Josh Allen. Josh Allen does things that very few can do on a football field. Well, I feel like because of what you just said there with Josh Allen, expectations for Buffalo are always high. But there's this growing concern that the window is is closing and they lose Stefan Diggs for say what you want about the on off field relationship he was producing and he was the star wide receiver in that room. And also just from a success standpoint, it's funny looking at what the Buffalo Bills have done the last handful of years, right? Four straight 11 plus win seasons and AFC East titles. They've made the playoffs six times in the last seven seasons under Sean McDermott yet. They're five and six in those playoff games. They've lost three divisional round games in a row after that AFC championship loss to the Chiefs. So it's like they're so close, they're just not getting there. And now it feels like some of the talent and production that they have could drop off this year. So it seems like there's more fear around Buffalo, which if I'm Sean McDermott, that would worry me a little bit for my job. Like I've I've had all of this success, but it's May 30th and people are saying that we can't do it. Yeah, do you think do you think the ghost of 13 seconds is haunting them? Oh, for sure. I mean, do you think they could ever I I think it's almost like they need an exorcism. They need to get away from it. There needs to be some way to where something bad isn't going to happen to our cuz they're they're a good team. You know, they're a good team and they've got the one of the best players who should be an MVP candidate and they do some unique thing. I mean, they ran the ball for 182 yards against against Kansas City, something that the Baltimore yeah. Ravens a, they didn't try to do, but they couldn't do. So I, 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 I they feel like, look, I know they're going through changes offensively, and everybody focuses on, oh, they don't have Stefan Diggs. Oh, my God, what are they going to do? They don't have Stefan Diggs. They'll be fine without Diggs, right? right? I mean, they tried to get the ball to Diggs in that game. First play of the game, they try to throw it to him. He fumbles. You know, they get a penalty because it went out of bounds. The second play, he drops the ball over the middle. He drops a deep pass that could have won. The, I mean, they tried to get him the ball. It just wasn't what had happened, you know? And so, look, I I have a feeling that they're probably a little bit of that 13-second jinx. Yeah, well, and there's also last year, too, they have the opportunity at Orchard Park that they let slip away. And you're like, if you can't get them now, when can you? Um, Bill's offensive coordinator, Joe Brady, in his first full year in that role um, was asked about the concerns he has with the now unproven wide receiver room and questions about the offense. Here's what he had to say. Look, at the end of the day, uh, this is Josh Allen's offense, right? Like, you're going you're gonna to put together the offense around the guys that you got. So for us to just say, hey, we're just going to scrap everything and, uh, you know, everything was broken, that wasn't the case, right? And so, uh, you know, there'll be some elements of things that I believe in, but uh, it's more of like, tell me who we have on our football team and the guys and what they can do well, and we're going we're gonna to do that. But I think that goes back to what you just said, Michael. Like, as long as you have Josh Allen, you've got a chance. You got a chance. And look, we know this about Josh Allen. He he will lose the strike zone at times. He will turn the ball over. That's something he does do. But he's hard as hell to tackle. And he's a problem in the run game. You have to run Josh Allen. 
this can't be one of those situations where you decide you're not going to run him because if you do that, you're taking away his game. And I'm sure Joe Brady will run him. And But they're also, you know, with the way they've utilized these two tight ends in, in, in the offense, it gives him a great opportunity. I mean, they almost threw it 600 times last year, and Josh Allen carried it 111 times. So you don't want to take that away. I mean, think about this, Stormy. The guy scored 15 touchdowns rushing last year. Are you taking him out? You're not. You're not. Um, it's it's interesting, too. I'm sorry. I'm sidetracked here looking through some of the comments on this poll as well for who could be the biggest threat. In addition to people just saying the Chiefs would be the biggest threat to themselves because we know some of the off-season issues that they have had paired in with, you know, if Patrick Mahomes gets hurt. So the, the if factor with him, that's what would, would hurt their chances. But we're getting a lot of love here for the Eagles, for the Lions, and for the Packers. We're seeing a lot of Jordan Love gifts in the comments here. Is that surprising yeah. to you that they're getting as much hype as they are in the no. NFC? No, I mean, because they played well last year. At the end of the season, they had San Francisco on the ropes. Now, San Francisco's defense played better in the second half, kind of shut that down. Detroit, look, go back and watch that tape. Detroit have every opportunity to win that game. I think the fourth down call, I know people in the analytical community don't buy into momentum, but there was a momentum shift when they didn't get that fourth down, and it kind of brought life back to San Francisco. I think Detroit, I said this on the pod today, I don't think Detroit's going to suffer through any of the disease of me. I still have a sense that they're hungry. And with Campbell as the coach, I think they'll be pushing the envelope. Now, I do think people will come after them. People have prepared for them. It's going to be a harder year for them than ever before. But they're better defensively, especially in the secondary, where it really is going to matter. So, yeah, I, th- I could see Detroit. I could see Green Bay as being obstacle. And, I, look, we just talked about Philadelphia. Phillies went into the draft without any problems. They needed a corner. They solved that with two corners in the draft. But the question remains, we had Baldy on the podcast last week, Brian Baldinger. It really going to come back to how Hurts plays. Are we getting the Hurts from last year or are we getting them from two years ago? 